we have a staff sculptor who is very, very talented. And uh, these, these become more a work of art, particularly these bowl game trophies, because this trophy design, it becomes the symbol of that bowl game. There's plenty of room to park at the Firefighters Museum. Few visitors are dropping by today. But that could change dramatically if a major racetrack locates just down the street. We're, we're really pleased with it because we find that this is the only Firefighters Museum in the United States, uh, Pete, that's actually owned and operated. The Firefighters Museum the is an interesting, itself. if somewhat obscure, attraction in Oklahoma City. But the thought of a racetrack next oh, yeah. door has given its curator big ideas. You expecting what uh, eight, nine thousand people a day over there at the racetrack? Hey, I'll settle for ten percent of it. And that's <laughs> nine hundred a day. You know, that's that's not bad. Yeah, I'm all, I'm all for that track, pal. For now, the museum survives on contributions from Oklahoma firemen. Its visitors are mainly school kids on field trips. But Sam Orch has a vision. He sees a day when it could be the biggest firefighters museum in the country, all because of Remington Park. Oh, I'm all for it. It's, it's, it's the greatest thing that ever happened. But we've got about 83 Hall of Famers enshrined in here. These are the first Hall of Famers right here. Over at the Softball Hall of Fame, they're looking forward to having a racetrack next door. The track would mean more visitors and more money. Hall of Fame officials have been talking with the track's promoters, planning for the future. We've talked with the uh, uh, DiBartolo people uh, when they first came in here, and they really want to work uh, with us. They want to work with, of course, the other attractions that are here in this area. And I think it'll be a very mutual, beneficial thing for everybody. The Softball Hall of Fame, the Firefighters Museum, and other local attractions are anxiously waiting for final word on Remington Park. If the track becomes a reality, they'll be looking at a bright future. Peter Mays, News 4. The family was living in this remodeled chicken coop. An open flame gas heater set too close to a wall started the blaze last night. They killed the three children. <laughs> Several attempts were made to rescue them, but according to one witness, the fire was so intense it kept everyone at bay. Doing that, but then flames were flying out. I guess because it's all tin, and it's just you know too hot. You could just couldn't do that. It's just. Flames everywhere. I just the three children trapped inside died from smoke inhalation. They have been identified as 18-month-old Misty Don Marks, three-and-a-half-year-old Amy Michelle Marks, and their cousin, four-year-old Ralph Don Newton, Jr. A neighbor was able to save Sadonna Sires, mother of the two girls, and three-month-old Randy Sires. By the time fire officials arrived on the scene last night, the house was totally engulfed. Fire officials say the three children trapped inside never had a chance. They were in the room where the fire initially started, and it was just so hot and so intense in there, the smoke was, that they just didn't really stand a chance. He had a burn on his cheek, and he had a burn on his stomach. The surviving infant, Randy, is in stable condition with second-degree burns. His mother, Sadana, is in critical condition with third-degree burns over her entire body. The man who saved them, Melvin Truax, is in good condition in a Grady County hospital. Kevin Ogle, News 4 in Chickasha. the house they discovered a body of the uh, male subject who lives at the residence in the living room on the divan uh, and then a check into the north 
east bedroom revealed the female occupant of the house laying face down on the floor. Uh, there's blood stains in the bathroom and in the hallway. We're very concerned. Things like this don't happen too often in Canadian County. And when they do, it uh, brings out the worst in all of us or the best in all of us. Ever. Everyone keeps asking her what she wants for Christmas, and um, she says she's already gotten it, that she wanted her transplant, and that's what she got, but she has lots of other packages under the tree, and we just hope that everyone has as nice a Christmas as we're going to have. The results of an examination of the bank uh, indicated that the bank was in an insolvent condition. Two other states would tie, but none could surpass Oklahoma in bank closings in 1985. First City Bank of Oklahoma City was one of 13 this year to be declared insolvent and closed. But like most of Oklahoma's financial failures, several days later, First City reopened with new owners. All depositors were protected. Striking truck drivers idled the nation's auto industry for a short time in 1985. Picketers marched outside Oklahoma City's General Motors plant at a time when production was at an all-time high. Car sales were strong most of the year. The Teamsters strike prompted some local car dealers to bypass the truckers and go straight to the plants to get cars themselves. The last time they had one of these trucks, it was not a hostile picket line. Lincoln Mercury was able to get some drivers to go in cross the picket line and still ship cars. And they're hoping they can do the same thing again. Unlike the auto industry, the airplane business fell on hard times in 1985. At its peak of production, the Bethany Gulfstream plant employed more than 1,200 people. Today, only a handful remain to finish up orders on the once popular Gulfstream Commander. The factory is now for sale. The president of the local manufacturing plant points to the local economy for the downturn in his business. In 81, there were over 900 turboprops delivered by the industry. Last year, there were 180. So that shows you what the impact has been on that segment of the market in just three years. But while 1985 appeared to signal the end of Gulfstream and the Gulfstream turboprop commander, the year's end brought promise of new industrial strength. Governor Nye and Lieutenant Governor Spencer Bernard's trips to the Orient apparently paid off. The state's chief executives lured Hitachi Electronics to Norman, Oklahoma. Their plant will eventually employ more than 500 people. And with one Japanese firm here, industry analysts say the chances of coaxing more are extremely strong. With the business year in review, I'm Kurt Autry. You have a loan payment due January 1. With whom? I hope so too. All right, thank you for calling in. I appreciate it. Farming is your career. I understand. Yes. All right, uh, listen. Let me say this. Uh, what kind of condition is he in? Tell me, please. 
Is, is he in a, a dangerous state? Is there any danger? Do you think there's any danger? Okay. And if praying without stopping is possible, that's what I do. Each time I lift this receiver, I lift it with a prayer in my heart. Ag link now. It's been very good. We have had two. Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, second, they will be open through the. Come on here, babe. Come on. Come on. Her ears are throwing off, just had little short stubs. And I give him my tax records and all my records that, that he needed. A week later, he brought all this back and laid this all out on the table. And he just sat back and he said, there's not one thing that I can tell you to do that you haven't already done. As near as I can tell you, it would be like uh, losing a member of your family. In fact, I could, I can justify, I mean, I could justify in my mind losing my wife better than I can my, my operation. Sit by me. Come on. Come on, baby. You're not getting down there, are you? Nah. A little bit. Come on, baby. Well, I think it's very important that this AgriLink hotline continues, and it's, on, it's the only way it can continue is for somebody to fund it. Linda Thompson and her two young daughters vanished from the Shepherd Mall parking lot last August. The two little girls were found safe the next day. Thompson's partially decomposed body was found two months later in a Seminole Lake. Local prosecutors want Don Wilson Hawkins and Dale Austin Shelton to stand trial for Thompson's kidnapping and murder. During a preliminary hearing for the pair, Hawkins' girlfriend testified the men said they were holding Linda for $1,000 ransom. The girlfriend said Hawkins and Shelton told her they were going to kill Thompson out in the country somewhere. The girlfriend's teenage nephew described how the accused killers had sex with the victim while she was chained to a barn rafter. We have distorted the young witness's picture in order to protect his identity. A judge will watch alleged videotape confessions made by Hawkins and Shelton before deciding if they should stand trial for Linda Thompson's abduction and murder. Scott Wallace, News 4 at the Oklahoma County Courthouse. Patrolman Richard Riggs was barely alive when he was loaded into an ambulance shortly after nine last night. Moments earlier, Officer Riggs had been gunned down when he and his partner stopped a van load of armed robbery suspects. One of the suspects began firing shots at the officers. The officers began to return fire 
Uh, they fired a total of approximately 12 shots. The van began rolling in a northwesterly direction uh, across the street. Uh, the suspect was using the van as cover as it rolled. He escaped by jumping a fence and running into an open field to the north of that location. The shooting sparked a citywide search for a suspect named Ronald Keith Boyd. Police received a tip around 11 this morning that Boyd had barricaded himself inside a southwest Oklahoma City home. Police tactical team members surrounded the house and evacuated all of the neighbors. Hostage negotiators attempted to phone the shooting suspect and talk him into giving up. According to police, the man refused to answer the phone. After five hours of waiting, police moved in, tossing tear gas inside the house. The decision was made to assault the house. That was done by using tear gas canisters uh, inside the home, after which the uh, TAC team members uh, went into the house. The suspect has been taken into custody. He has been taken from the scene. At this time, I don't have any information as to his condition, uh, but he is in custody. Police say no one was seriously injured in the assault. Scott Wallace, News 4, Southwest Oklahoma City. kind of have to chase it and catch up with it and uh, cut it off at the spot that you can stop it. And uh, like I say, then sometimes we have to move so fast that uh, we, we got spots we have to go back and, and get. We have fire investigators on the scene and, and they will be here throughout the morning in that a security guard uh, reported that there was a back door open prior to the, the start of the fire. thing that John's talking about here now and firing them. Did you find when you arrived that it was being... I thought we would have trouble with those five or ten inmates that lost their positions and we would have to deal with those and uh, physically handle those people and perhaps lock them up and uh, I knew we hadn't heard the end of it but I didn't know it would uh, culminate that evening. hasn't been mentioned because this is money we had in the bank for next year. Which means next year.
at Rockwell International, where they have a union. Those that have jobs now, here before that group tell you, he said that right, and that's all we're talking about. Listen, that it's a backward step. And I'm committed not to vote for anything that will take Oklahoma backward. We deserve to move forward. otherwise. However, test results of the past at this point, but let the Senate get on about its business and it's more in order to very likely cast one more vote. <laughs> He's talking alert and seems to come through the surgery just fine with no complications. What is the next step now? The next step is to analyze the results of the biopsy and determine exactly what was in the tumor and determine any treatment that might be necessary. Do you know how long it will be before doctors will have some more knowledge about the, what his condition is? Well, generally it'll take about two to three days to get the lab work all processed. They're doing some extensive tests on it to determine exactly what's wrong, and then they'll determine any follow-up from there. the Godfather, to have him speaking the truth once. And if that's your question, my answer is every state... ...were cut uh, that had union contracts. Uh, Senator Taylor, you recognize... I can tell you what it will do if it passes. It will do more to destroy the morale and the attitude of the work ethic of this state, of the people who live by the sweat of their brow, than anything that we could possibly do. led to the degree that they want to the breadth of what's happening in the world. Of the, um, Reagan has joined in the, the first celebration, first national celebration of the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King, while his administration has been responsible for the gutting of affirmative action programs and the slashing of funds for uh, anti-poverty program social services uh, for which uh, uh, progressive people have fought. Uh
As you can see, HBO is now scrambling its signal 24 hours a day. If you want more information about descrambling HBO for your home satellite system, call your local cable company. The days of intercepting free home box office and Cinemax movies are over. Last week, the nation's two major pay TV networks started scrambling their signals. According to cable officials, more pay TV services are expected to follow suit. WTBS, CNN will be scrambled come July 1st. Showtime, the movie channel, will be in May. So it is something that's going to occur. The advent of satellite technology turned many TV and appliance stores into dish distributors. But the announcement that HBO and Cinemax are scrambling doesn't have the owner of this store too concerned. There are more than 100 channels available on satellite, and distributors believe it would be impossible for all of them to scramble. If every cable on channel right now that you could get on cable, if every one of them scrambled, if you had a satellite dish, you would still have more selection than you would if you had cable. It costs money to scramble pictures, and HBO and Cinemax are the two big money makers. They can afford to do it. Dish owners and distributors are betting most of the channels on satellite can't afford or won't pay the extra cost of scrambling. Would you want to uh, scramble uh, the news at 10 o'clock? You know, make people pay for it? Not when they got other channels to turn, it's the same thing. You know, it's just not feasible. There's no way everybody's going to scramble. It puts us on a fair footing for the future. I think it uh, finally justifies the, the higher outside rate, although not at the rate that we had previously said. It justifies that there should be a higher rate, and it sets a formula for determining that, and I, I do believe it's a fair agreement. If we were not doing what we are doing now, we would have an additional deficit next year, 86, 87, of over 500,000 additional dollars. 